In this video, I want to introduce the notion of work. Uh, this is a concept from physics, and I'm going to try to introduce it in a uh, very calculus-centric way. So if you have no physics knowledge, uh, hopefully this video makes sense. So work is going to be equal to force times distance. This is a formula from physics. And most people know, even if they don't know physics, that force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, when the acceleration is non-constant, so if A is not constant, in other words, if the acceleration changes, then the force changes, then F is not constant. And, and this is more of what you would expect in the real world, right? If you're pushing a box, um, if you're applying a force to a box, you're going to get tired. So the force you're applying is not constant. So we're going to be looking at work done by a non-constant force. And we're going to completely derive the formula using calculus. So work done by a non-constant force. So non-constant force. So this derivation completely relies on, obviously on physics, we're relying on, on these two formulas, force is mass times acceleration, and work is equal to force times distance. So we're taking these things as, as knowns. So let me, let me draw a picture here so you see it. Scroll down, so say we have a little person, it's a green person give them some hair and here's where they're going to start and let me draw a horizontal line and say this person wants to go all the way over here and there is a box here so here's our box let me give it a color and this person which doesn't have a name is going to be pushing the box so pushing the box so trying to push the box from here to here. And let's partition this interval. So by partition, I mean break it up into little pieces. Say this is x sub 0. Say this is x sub 1. Say this is x sub 2. And then maybe this here would be x sub i minus 1. And this is x sub i. And the last one will be x sub n. And we'll set x sub 0 equal to a and x sub n equal to b. And suppose that the force varies over time, which it should if our acceleration is not constant, because recall that force is mass times acceleration. So if the acceleration changes, the force will change. So suppose that the force, suppose the force varies over time. So I'll just say varies. So because it varies, it's going to be a force function. So we'll let f of x denote the force at position x. So depending on where the little person is, uh, f of x will give the force based on where he is in terms of x. And this is going to be for x between A and B. That way it match, matches our physical scenario with our little person. So now what we'll do is we're going to pick some random number, pick C sub I in some random interval, which we'll call X sub I minus one, X sub I. So I'll, I'll show you what that is. You can probably already see it, but let me emphasize it. So we're picking some number in some random interval. This is this is some interval, ith intervals. We're picking a random number in a random interval. So very, very random. And let delta x sub i, we're gonna let this be the length of this random ith subinterval. So we'll subtract the bigger endpoint from the smaller one. That'll give us the length of this little subinterval. 
So we know by our construction, by what we just said, that at C sub i, we know for a fact, because we said it's the force, at C sub i, the force is f of C sub i. And we know this is true because we created it. We, we, we created this force function from scratch. We said f of x is going to be the force at position x. So therefore, f of c sub i is actually the force at position, at position c sub i. So to move, so to move the box from x sub i minus one to x sub i. So to move the box across this little subinterval. So from here to here, so across the entire random subinterval, the work is, well, we actually don't know what the work is, and here's why. So the work, which I'll call w sub i, so it's like a little increment of work, is approximately equal to the force at c sub i times the distance that we've traveled. So we've traveled the length of the entire subinterval, so delta x sub i. So it's really important to understand why this is an approximation, because the force varies, right? Let me come up here back to the interval. So we're using the force at, let's say this is c sub i right here. We're using the force at c sub i here to approximate the work done over the entire interval. So it's not perfect, right? Because if I travel just a little bit to the right or to the left, then the force changes. So that's why the work is an approximation. So we're using the force at a particular point to approximate the work over the entire interval. So it's not perfect. But we can use this same reasoning to approximate the work over the entire interval. So the work over the entire interval is the finite sum of the little pieces of work, right? You do the same thing for each interval, which is equal to the finite sum, as i runs from 1 to n, of f of c sub i delta x sub i. So we have an approximation for the work over the entire interval, the work it takes for the little person to move the box from one point to the other point. So what we do is what we always do in calculus is we take the limit. We let n go to infinity and we get a definite integral. So the work is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the finite sum as i runs from 1 to n of f of c sub i times delta x sub i. And we say that this is equal to the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx, where f of x is our force function. So where f of x is the force at position x. Beautiful, beautiful construction. So in the problems that we are going to be doing, we're going to be using one particular force function. The one we're going to be using is Hooke's law. So Hooke's law for some reason that makes me think of a pirate, but I don't think this was the pirate. I think that's from a movie. So the force required to compress or stretch a spring is proportional, so equals k, to the distance x that the string is stretched or compressed. So I didn't write that, but I'll say it again. So the force required to compress or stretch a spring is directly proportional to the length that it is stretched or compressed from. K is called the spring constant. So spring constant. So obviously F here is the force and X is the distance. So we're gonna be using this to do problems with spring. So basically we'll read the questions and then we'll just figure out K and then we just compute an integral and we're good to go. But it's kind of nice and hopefully um, this explanation kind of made sense. I mean, it's really, really cool if you understand it, especially the part about, I think this is the coolest part, that this is actually an approximation and understanding why uh, is kind of enlightening. It shows you that it's not perfect because 
we're using the force at a particular point in some random subinterval to approximate the work over the entire subinterval. So that's not perfect. And so calculus ideally tries to make it perfect by considering the limit. And yeah, hopefully this has been helpful. Take care.